Hello everyone, welcome back. Do you want to see how I made this Dear Ant Pendant? Let's do it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is cut this off. So I just have it in my vise, and I'm just going to use a regular old hacksaw. Alright, I'm actually glad it fell out because what I want to do is I want to go around in a couple areas because I don't want to cut this off. Alright, so I didn't want to cut any of these bumps and because we want to keep that in the design all right so the next step is we're going to have to clean all this up so i'll be using the uh rotary tool to do that so i'll bring you back all right so i may sound a little muffled because i got a dust mask on but i got my uh when rotary tool variable speed i have it set at about three and a 60 grit sanding drum All right, so you got a little taste of it. I'll finish this up and I'll bring you back for the next step. All right, got my neighbor cutting his lawn. Hopefully it doesn't uh, sound too loud. So I got it all sanded down to where I want it at this point. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna soak this in some peroxide to kind of get some of that staining off of there. But it's looking good so far. So I'm going to soak this probably for a couple hours and then um, I'll let it dry and I'll be back. All right, so it was soaking in peroxide for about a half an hour and then I just uh, rinsed it off and took a little brush and scrubbed it with some detergent, you know, dishwashing soap. It looks really nice. Now at this point, you could polish this up and just leave it as is and have it as sort of a, uh, you know, a little, little uh, good luck charm, whatever you wanted. But uh, we're going to go a little further. So what I need to do is figure out what orientation I'm going to want this and what side. So I think, I think I want it like this. Okay. So the next step is going to be, I have here a little screw eye. Now this is stainless steel. If you're making something you're going to wear, you're going to want it um, stainless steel or brass. Um, brass will tarnish. Um, I wouldn't recommend like zinc or anything like that because that too could, it could rust you know, uh, from the salts in your sweat. But uh, I found that stainless steel is great. Um, obviously, if you have access to a silver one, that would be awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole right here. And we're going to place this in. And I'll show you why I'm doing this at this point. Um, I won't bore you watching me drill a little tiny hole. But I have a bit here, um, a drill. I'm not sure what size it is. Um, I purchased a set from Harbor Freight that just did tiny sizes, all the way like the size of a needle um, up to whatever, you know, they're in numbers. So this one was just the right size for this. I tested it out. So I won't bore you watching me drill a little tiny hole, but I will be back when I'm done and we'll continue on. All right, so we have our hole drilled. We're going to take our little screw eye make sure it fits in there
Now the reason why I wanted to do this at this point is because we want to see how it hangs. So I just have a, just a little piece of, I don't even know what it is, a little piece of elastic I had laying around. So I'm going to put this on here. Actually, this needs to go one more turn this way. There you go. So I want to see how it hangs so I could do my next step is, which we're going to do something on here. I was thinking about it. Um, I was thinking about carving a heart in there, but then I said, if I do a relief heart, you're really not going to see it. Um, and I was thinking maybe we could, I could paint something on there, but I'll be honest with you, I am not an artist as far as painting a scene or something, you know, in miniature. Um, and my handwriting is atrocious, not like Donna, that she could write something nice on it. So what I'm going to do is lay out a scene on here of just a, I think a mountain and maybe like a moon or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put some epoxy on this and screw this back in. When the epoxy dries, I'll be back with a, uh, a pencil and we'll sketch something out. All right, so the epoxy is dried, and that's what we got. So now my plan is to make this simple little mountain scene and then cut it out, cut this area out. I have no idea how it's going to work. Never done it before, so let's see. So what I'm going to do is kind of going to get like a just a halfway line sort of and I'll have the moon kind of there All right, something like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably erase that and lower it down a little bit down here. Then I'm going to drill some holes in this area here so I can get my coping saw in there. So I'll do that and I'll come back when I have the holes drilled. All right, so I have a bunch of holes in there. Now I'm going to take, this is just a little coping saw blade. I'm going to open this up. And then what I'll do is pop this in here into one of the holes, if I can get it through. Now I'll set this up in my vise and I'll start cutting it. So I'll bring you over there for a little bit of that. Alright, so I got it in the vise padded with a piece of uh, leather and I'm just going to start cutting. All right, hopefully you see that. We got one peak done. So now I'll continue on with that, and I'll bring you back when I have the rough cut. All right, so I have some various diamond uh, grinding tips, and now it's just a matter of refining the shape.
All right, so you get the idea. I'll bring you back when I get very, very close to being done. All right, so I got the initial shape cut out. I'm not sure if it looks like mountains or if it looks like a crazy pumpkin, a <laughs> cough pumpkin. <laughs> That's what I should have done. I should have made a cough pumpkin. <laughs> All right, so at this point, I'm just going to use these diamond files. You know, take all the various shapes and um, just do this by hand and get it to where I want it. Um, and then I'm probably going to put a little bit of uh, relief in here and I'll show you when I get to that point. But I want to clean this up. I want to make this moon look round um, and do the best I can. But that's all going to be hand work and it's pretty much going to be me going like this in this direction. You're not really going to see me doing it, but uh, basically that's how I'll do it. Just a lot of hand filing. So I'll bring you back when I get closer. All right. That is obviously not dependent. I had some issues recording. Um, some of the footage is going to stay in. I'm totally out of frame. Um, and it was, I was way advanced in what I was doing before I figured out that the camera was kind of cocked. So I made this little, just a little dummy piece so I could show you what I did because it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, I got a lot of wind blowing out here. Hopefully it's not howling in the video, but basically I got a drum sander and I took this and I'll kill the volume when I uh, edit it. So there's a little sample of what I did. So basically, um, you can see I have this pushed up a little bit. Um, I have to have it at a slow speed when you're doing that, otherwise it'll come flying off. But this way I can get in the edge without the black rubber touching it. But basically you're just gonna, you know, you put in your little divots and this and that, make it look like rocks. Um, and then you kind of feather it in like this. And I use this and a couple different uh, diamond tips like this. Uh, as you can see, I film outside and every once in a while, them dang flies come by. So um, combination of that, and then I ended up using these needle files instead of the diamond ones. These seem to cut a little smoother um, and get less clogged. So, so basically that's what I did. Let me get the piece back. Oh, and I actually showed the piece and then I um, clear coated it and it, it was set aside to dry. So now you're actually going to get to see it clear coated. <laughs> so let me clear this all up and I'll bring you back. All right, double, triple check in. Okay, we're recording. It's in frame. There it is. <laughs> so I think it came out pretty nice. We got our mountains and the moon. Now I don't do anything on the back. I just smooth that out because it's the back. But uh, it's got a nice look to it. Hopefully this is all showing up. I'm trying to show all the angles. I'm really digging it. Now this has one coat of this clear, uh, clear acrylic sealer and it's a matte finish. And I've used this before on Atlas and I love the look. Okay. Um, I could have polished it, but there's so many nooks and crannies. 
Um, I wanted to leave them there. I didn't want to, you know, sand it to the point of making it look like it was plastic. So, um, you know, it's got that uh, handcrafted look. So I will put another, probably two coats, because I put very light coats. Two more coats of this, and then we'll um, get the lace, the leather, and um, some other things, and we'll finish this up. All right, here it is, all done. It's got a nice little sheen to it. I really like the way it looks. One last thing to do. We have here a couple beads that I made. Um, I'll have a link in the description to my deer antler projects. Um, the necklace and the bracelet, I believe I show you how I make these little beads. And we have some leather lace here. We'll put this through here. Now you don't have to use these beads. You could just put the lace through or you could use paracord, you know, whatever you happen to have. I just like the way it looks with the leather and these beads. Come on now. Got a windy day out there today. Let me make sure these is turned correctly. A little twist in it. And there you go. Come down to this end. I just I like to make sure it's not twisted in any weird direction. Look at that, it tied in the knot itself. Wow, if you wanted to do that, you couldn't. Now you can use some kind of clasp if you wanted. There it is. It's the moon and the mountains. So thanks for coming along everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that if you can get yourself a hold of an antler, it's pretty cool to make some things out of it. The rings, the pendants, the bracelets, it's, it's awesome. If you want some inspiration, I'll have the whole playlist of the deer antler projects. They're so much fun. And they're a renewable resource, especially if you get the sheds. <laughs> so thanks for coming along. Much love and appreciation to all of you, my brothers and sisters. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. I appreciate you all. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you on the next one.